How to configure scanning Docker containers in Kaspersky Endpoint Security 11.1 for Linux. In this video, we will demonstrate how Kaspersky Endpoint Security 11.1 for Linux protects Docker images and containers. First, let's talk about the license. In general, Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux can work with a Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Business license, however, to be able to scan containers, you need a Kaspersky Hybrid Cloud Security Enterprise license. Docker containers can be scanned in real time and on demand. We will manage Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux through a policy in Kaspersky Security Center. The unaccess scan task performs real-time scanning. It is important to make sure that the option, Enable Namespaces and Docker Containers Monitoring, is enabled in, General Settings, Interceptor Settings, in the policy. The policy shows the default path to the socket that the Docker service uses. If Docker is configured to use a non-default path for some reason, specify it in the policy. You can also select what to do with a container if a threat is detected. Let's change the action to, Stop Container. We will run a container, create a malicious file inside, and try to open it. You can see that we have been forced to exit the container. Let's go back to the Kaspersky Security Center, open the Events tab, and run the KESL selection. We prepared this selection beforehand and configured it to display event types that we are interested in. You can see that Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux detected a threat in the VB container and stopped it. The container scan task scans images and containers on demand. Of course an ordinary on-demand scan task can do this as well, but its detection events will show only SHA-256 hashes of images, layers, and containers. Let's create a container scan task. The task with the asterisk mask scans everything, containers and images from which they were created. If necessary, you can specify any container name using the question mark and the asterisk masks. In image names, only, the asterisk mask, is allowed. You can specify what to do with a container when a threat is detected, skip, stop or stop if disinfection failed. Let us leave the default action here. You can also specify what to do with an image where a threat is detected, skip or delete. Let's change this action to delete. We will leave the default list of items to be scanned unchanged. You can exclude specific files from scanning if necessary. Threat names can also be added to exceptions. We will not change the default actions configured for malicious objects. As a bonus, we will do the following. Let's configure the policy to make Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux run a script when it detects a threat. This script simply writes information to a file, but you can also configure it to send information to a server, for example, via a POST request. The script is written in PowerShell, but Kaspersky Security Center cannot run PowerShell scripts, so we have wrapped it into a batch file. Specify the path to the batch file. Kaspersky Security Center can run a script upon an event only if the script is located in the Kaspersky Security Center installation folder. We will run the script with parameters that pass values of internal variables for a specific event, host name, event description, task name, time, etc. Run the container scan task and wait for it to complete. Let's go to the event list and run the selection again. You can see that the task has detected some threats. It appears that there was a malicious object in the file system of the container that we ran. It means that this malicious object is most likely present in the image downloaded from Docker Hub. Indeed, you can see that Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux has detected a malicious object in the image, too. Let's now check how our scripts have run. 
The events PS log file was created after the PowerShell script completed. You can see that the colon delimiters are used here as in JSON format. The KSC events log file was created after the BAT script completed. It contains values of variables that were passed as start parameters. If you are interested in the PowerShell script, it looks like this. And the batch file runs PowerShell and also outputs the results to a separate file. 